In this week's episode, we make our way from the remote and rugged anchorage at Lundy Island, out across the Bristol Channel to the lovely town harbour at Padstow. We're just getting ready to leave Lundy and oh, that was a lumpy night. The sun's shining, um, but it's very swelly. But I've heard people say that about Lundy. Um, uh, Did you think yeah. it was windy, rolly last night? Uh, no, I didn't. I just, I just I thought it was a bit swelly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not sure. It could have been so swelly that my head ended up in a pillowcase. <laughs> It's a bit windier than expected. So we're going out with two reefs in the main to start with. Uh, we can always shake them out as we get out, but it feels quite windy in here. So we'll see how we get on. Um, but yes, off cover the rest of the Bristol Channel down Padstow. Let's go forward at that. Okay. okay, so we've left Lundy. Here's Lundy, and we are. Ollie doesn't want his hat on. Ollie doesn't want his hat on. We've left Lundy, and we're heading to Padstow today. It's a fairly straight run. Uh, the tides and weather are the tides and wind direction aren't absolutely perfect, but they're okay. Um, so at the minute we've got 10 knots of wind, but it's due to pick up to about 15, 16. Uh, and at some point I think we're going to have a little bit of wind over tide which might be a little bit uncomfortable hopefully not too bad Ollie's in his car seat and he's not happy about it but hey that's just the same as if he was on a long car journey isn't it we should get into Padstow by about four or five o'clock and then we're going to have a two or three days there I think my job today is just looking at lobster pots and and lots of fishermen, um, or just people, um, put down crab and lobster traps uh, around the island and mainland and um, to shallow water. Um, there's usually two buoys and there's usually a line between the two buoys you can get your crops stuck in them. Jack, engine off please. We're doing six knots, we'll do that at to four. I don't want to go any faster than this. Finally, we are just leaving Lundy. There it is behind us. We've only just left, we're less than a mile away. And we've got sails up and we are uh, sailing with no engine. Oh, it's just the conditions just haven't been right in this trip so far to, to do anything but motor sail. We don't want to get to Padstow much before three and currently our ETA there is 20 past half past three. So at this speed, 5.7 knots, we are bang on target. The uh, lock time is four o'clock and you can get in about an hour and a half either side because we've got to go over an area called the Doom Bar, uh, which we'll talk about. But currently, so far so good. It is so nice, the silence of not having an engine. We had a couple of hours with no engine yesterday, but today, as Anne has just said, it's the first time that we've left the anchorage and instantly turned the engine off. Sails up, engine off. Yeah, but, <laughs> and this is what it's all about. But, you know, reality is you have to motor. It, it just hasn't been the right conditions for that kind of sailing. No, and you have to motor if you want to get yeah. places. You can wait. <laughs> if you want to get somewhere, and, and because the of the way that the navigation works in the UK, you've always got to get somewhere. You can't just think, oh, well, we'll spend 12 hours doing a six hour passage because you can't, you, you'll find yourself well, you'll getting to it. Doing loads of overnight passages, yeah. which is fine eventually. Yeah. Um, but currently we don't, we don't, we want to take it easy. We're Are you getting frustrated with your book, Holly? I'm always getting frustrated that I'm not pointing at the animal you want. Oh, okay. Melissa needs to point at animals.
we are almost at Padstow. We're just rounding the island um, outside, or well, we're coming up to the island outside. We'll put a little thingy on the screen. Um, it's been pretty uneventful. Um, it's yeah. been quite rolly because we've got wind against tide that's kind of meeting us in the middle. So it's coming, the wind's coming from one side and the tide's coming from the other. So there's been a lot of chewing and throwing. Um, but it's fine. We are now motor sailing um, just to meet the gate at the right time um, because the harbours are a lock in, so you have to cross over um, the lock gate at a certain time. So we're motor sailing now, uh, but not long now. And we're looking forward to going ashore and going into Padstow. Shoes, yeah. Ollie wants to put his shoes on. Let's put your shoes on. Shoes. 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 It's always nap time or almost nap time when we're due to arrive somewhere. So I'm hoping I can get into sleep before we arrive. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. Shoes. shoes. Because he wants his shoes on. Everywhere you sail in the UK, there's a difficult area of pilotage and voyage and a narrow channel that has got some tale of woe and uh, awfulness about it. And Padstow is no exception. Here, we have an area called the Doom Bar. The Doom Bar, seriously. We've made Padstow. We are, well, yesterday we were in England, but we are in England. Um, so we have left our first country. <laughs> We've left Wales and we are now in England. Um, we're just getting tidied up. So we look a bit more presentable. Oh, and um, a very friendly gentleman has bought us a plank because the tide is going to go up and down here and we're going to yeah. rub on the wall, uh, which we don't want to do. We wonder what all the racket was. There seems to be a carnival going round the harbour, which is really cool. Holly's enjoying the music. It's a big carnival. Should we go and see? Should we go and see, Holly? <laughs> Should we go and see? <laughs> Holly doesn't like the noise, do you, Holly? Ah, ah. 
Yeah. So we've come out for a little explore away from the hustle and bustle of the busy town and explore along the coastline a bit. Yeah, Padstow is absolutely lovely, but it is very, very busy. And we enjoy that kind of atmosphere because when you've been at Anchor for a few days, it's nice to come into a little village where there's loads and loads of stuff going on. Uh, but today we thought we'd have a little bit of a break and get away from the noise and the, uh, and the town and come and see what is, lies outside of the town. This is beautiful, really nice. So along here there's lots of big sandy beaches but there's also some cool little covey type beaches. It looks like the tide comes right in here so you definitely don't want to be on this beach when the tide is coming in. Um, currently the tide's going out so we're fine. It's a bit crack. I'm sleepy though, it's the tide <laughs> What do you think, Holly? Can you touch it? Touch the cane. Here at St Saviour's Point, you've got this gorgeous little rocky beach with great coves to explore and lots of rocks to climb on. I wanted to I wanted to show you show you the crabs that I've just caught. Um, there's the twins. It's they came in the same net. That's that one's Joseph. And then there's um, Jolene. Look at that. So cute. Look at the little smiles. Okay. The eyes. Ah, I like tittles. Look at that. Cute. Really cute. I salt water at my fingers. Hang on, let me move the net. Look at that. Look at that. It's so cute. That little face, little eyes. Um, I'm just gonna release them now. Come on, Darius. There we go. Bye bye. So I'm sure a lot of you have noticed this, what do you call this, coach roof um, and the shocking state of the paint on here. So we have been sanding and getting all the plate paint up and prepping it to paint so hopefully it will look a lot better soon. It is drying very quick in this conservatory-like yes. environment.
I always find this bit the most satisfying bit. I'm now working on the foredeck. Every now and then we get asked like you all most YouTube channels do to review stuff. In fact, not just every now and then, pretty much every day we get asked to review stuff. We get asked to review gambling apps, we get asked to review online pew pew shoot 'em up games like Shadow Legend Raiders, games like that, and we just say no not doing it where it's it's ridiculous um it's got nothing to do with sailing uh and we just don't feel that it's we can do that with any sense of integrity however we do as you know take uh some products and review them and but it's always stuff that we think is going to be useful to us um, and perhaps useful to you and that means useful on the boat but also useful for the family because remember we're a family sailing now this company bottle bottle got in touch and said so can we send you some drinking bottles well we all know how important hydration is you know from a medical point of view i can tell you how important fat hydration is so they've sent us these bottles to try out and tell you how they are and uh, this is what they look like so they've sent us four of these larger ones, which are super, super cool. They are double skinned. They'll keep um, fluids hot or cold, as you'd expect. What's really, really cool about them, a couple of little features. Firstly, you'd, you've got the normal lid, as you'd expect. Secondly, they've got the straw function, so you can drink out them, and you may have just caught a glimpse of that. They send it, send them out with extra straws, which is fantastic. And, Apart from the drinking straw section, they've also got a normal section like that. Really sturdy stainless steel clip there, so you can clip it onto a belt. But there's a secret thing here. In the bottom, there's a pillbox for your tablets or your vitamin supplements or whatever it is you take. So that goes in the bottom. How cool is that? Absolutely brilliant. So they've sent us them in these four colours. Really cool. The blue, lilac grey and green and then they've sent us this other one which is called the magic cube which is slightly smaller again it's got the screw off lid it comes with spare straws which is fantastic and you can either just drink out of it like a normal mug or you can drink it out of it like that. And of course that size is the same size that will fit in your cup holder. These ones are a little bit bigger. We've been using another premium brand of uh, bottles to stay hydrated. Uh, these look as good, if not better, than the premium brand ones that we've been trying. I've chosen this uh, cool green one and I really like the fact that I can keep my sweets in the bottom of it. Thanks so much to Bottle Bottle for sponsoring this episode and for sending these awesome drinking bottles to us. We genuinely do think they're really good and very high quality or we wouldn't be recommending them to you. You can get these from Amazon and don't forget to use our promo code to get a discount on the price. Now back to the episode. We have been visited by our friend Chris who you know from the channel. He's been on the channel many many times before and uh, Chris is a marine engineer and he's been uh, looking at our engine this morning uh, we've been doing lots and lots of other things which we're going to show you but uh, we're going to change the gearbox oil 
uh, we're going to get some more oil for the engine so we've got spare the oil that's in the engine is fine yeah, doesn't need changing to do a future change. we're getting enough so that we've got enough oil to do a future change and we're going to get gearbox oil because the gearbox oil needs doing we're kind of stuck in Padstow at the minute they say it's a bit of a honey pot <laughs> once you get in you can't get out the issue that we've got is the prevailing winds in the UK are southwesterlies as anybody in the UK will tell you and we are sailing southwest down from Padstow down the coast past St Ives all the way to Land's End and then we've got to come round Land's End and up towards Penzance and Currently, obviously we want the tide behind us, so we will come out of Padstow at high tide and we'll go down the uh, coast, the north coast of Cornwall with the tide carrying us, which is great. But at the moment, the wind is coming towards us um, and it will create that wind over tide condition that we've talked about before, which will make the seas very, very lumpy. So, oh, left here. Okay. So, um, so the sea state the, the current yeah. forecast is it's yeah. forecast um five or six yeah. gusting to seven and the sea state is moderate to rough now if you're not a sailor you might think the sea state moderate that doesn't sound too bad anybody that sails will tell you that moderate doesn't mean moderate moderate yeah. means horrible <laughs> and rough is deadly yeah but um with also there's some important um tidal gates and stuff yes. that you've got to get around that, um, you, you've, that you've got to get in the right condition yeah so we're hoping that we can leave here in we're hoping uh, that we can leave on friday day after tomorrow it's looking like the wind will still be on the nose it will still be wind over tide but it won't be uh, it won't be strong enough to uh, kick up massive great big horrible waves and what we'll do then is we'll go out have a go <laughs> and if it's horrible we'll turn back uh, so that's the plan we're leaving hopefully Friday to go down to Lands End. Yeah, there's a big storm coming on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we need to we, get it round. Looks like we've got a four-day weather window to keep moving. Yeah. A bit further to get it checked. And then we'll find somewhere on the south coast of England to tuck in and hunker down for this storm that's coming on Tuesday. It's predicted like 60 knot winds, which is bonkers in in August, but. On, you know. That's the state of the world now, isn't it? If you're in Padstow and you need oil key garage, uh, this is where to come to get bits and pieces. And I'm guessing you can get most bits if to. Yeah, all. pretty much everything, yeah. Brilliant. So we're here getting this stuff, which yeah. we're going to use to sort out our gearbox oil issue. Yummy, yummy gearbox oil. This is the sandbar. Look at that. Well, I'm back in the engine bay again. Uh, Chris, Chris is here with us, and he's. Uh, we've changed the belt. Uh, we've checked the oil. Uh, everything on the engine looks great. We've had the air filter out. Um, but one thing we want to do is change the gearbox oil. This big chunk here is the engine, and the gearbox is over at the back at this end. This here is the gearbox bolted onto the engine. So you've got a, a screw at the top here, which is um, the filler, but it's also the dipstick. And then to get the oil, to get the gearbox oil out, there's a drain plug on the bottom. We've also got a suction pump. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get something under the engine to catch the oil and remove the, uh, the sump plug. Because I think that will, uh, you know, let out any other nasties that are in the gearbox. There shouldn't be anything particularly nasty. But I think we've got a bit of condensation in the gearbox because the oil doesn't look like it's a great colour. I'm just using this uh, endoscope to look inside the gearbox to see the condition of the um, gears and whether there's any signs of corrosion or pitting in there. There was a little bit of condensation in the gearbox resulting in emulsified oil and I guess that's kind of to be expected because we haven't changed the gearbox oil actually since we got the boat and um, uh, the boat was sat for a long time wasn't it so I probably should have done that but it's been running absolutely fine and look this is the condition of the the inside of the gearbox all looks uh, looks grand there's nothing there's nothing really to worry about but you see the color of that oil i don't like the color of the oil uh, 
but the that's from the top and then this is the view from inside the bottom in the in the filler uh, sorry in the drain so it all looks great actually it doesn't look like there's any sort of nasty rust or anything like that in there meanwhile above deck melissa and jack are cleaning the uh, gray paint on the aft deck because they're going to be repainting it uh, i'm sure you've already seen but this is now what our four deck uh, coach roof rather looks like having been cleaned and scrubbed and painted with new anti-slip and uh and their plan today i think is to do the aft deck so gradually bit by bit all the cosmetic side of these things on the boat is coming together as well yeah. I've cleaned the end of it because there was a little tiny bit of surface rust on the end of the dipstick and the uh, the ATF, the transmission fluid, which is the coolant, it's a kind of oil, in the gearbox uh, was a little bit of a weird colour. Uh, I think it was still doing its job okay, just probably not as well as it should have been. But look, in the top of the dipstick there's a tiny pinhole which is a breather and that allows air to breathe and of course while the boat was sat in Gampton before we had her um, when we got her the water wasn't up over the engine it was up just touching just touching the bottom of the engine and then I think I think at some point the water had been a bit higher and the guy we bought it off had emptied some of the water in efforts to make the boat more saleable uh, so we looked at it and thought, oh, that's great. The, end, the water's not come up over the engine, so it'll be fine. Uh, never make those kind of assumptions, I suppose. But uh, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. It could just be a bit of condensation in the gearbox, or it could be the fact that she's at some point had a little bit of water has seeped in there. But either way, it's no big deal. We've caught it. It's, it we've caught the issue. Gearbox is in great condition. We'll drain it. And what I'll probably do is I'll run it for... Uh, a little while and then change the oil again sooner than the normal uh, interval just to kind of make sure that we kind of give that a bit of extra TLC. This is the dipstick as you know and this is the drain plug. I'm talking quietly because Ollie's asleep and these are sealed by means of copper washers. Now I thought to myself oh great I have a box of copper washers so I'll be able to put new ones on and as is always the case I've got every size imaginable except the ones I need so what do you do well I can't I can't do nothing so I'm going to put the old copper washers back on but I'm going to anneal them annealing as I understand it not an engineer is basically in this case I'm going to heat it up cherry red cherry red with my propane torch uh, and then allow it to cool and it just makes the copper a little bit more malleable and more ductile uh, you can drop them in water as well to cool them to make them easier to handle afterwards but that's not strictly necessary with copper um, but i'm going to anneal them by just heating them up cherry red allow the metal to expand and it'll give it a bit more squishability once i come to reassemble them and then of course next time i change the oil i'll buy some bigger copper washers and get the correct size ones in fact i'm going to take measurements of these so i know which ones to get The other thing I don't have is a set of little funnels, sort of constantly making a list of things that I haven't got and need. Um, now, Ollie, as you know, um, is breastfed and bottle fed. So I've got one of these. This is his least favourite bottle. He hates the teat on this. He just won't drink from it. You give him a drink with this, he'll just spit it out. So I've uh, cut the end off. He doesn't like this bottle either. So that is now my little funnel. Make do and mend, eh? But I'll order, uh, I need to get... Uh, the right size copper washers and a set of little funnels for this kind of job. <laughs> Most difficult bit about this job is filming it, is putting the camera in a position where it's not in my way and it just means that um, it's just a lot more awkward. There you go, 1.2 litres so I need one of these 
and a little bit of the next one. Right, so I need another 200 mil from the second bottle. Doesn't need to be mega tight this. Job done. So what's going on and where are we going? Uh, I think we're going to catch a ferry if I've got the times right across to Rock. Rock? Um, so we can go for a swim. Yeah. I got yeah. the ferry times wrong. We're 50 minutes early for the ferry so we're getting ice cream. I got a new hat. Does it look stupid? I have had somebody recently tell me um, that my beard and my hair look stupid and they tell me every single video your beard and your hair look stupid, your beard and your hair look stupid, you need to do something about it. So my solution has, well I was going to go on their YouTube channel and make a comment about their appearance but whilst I was looking that up I just thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to block them and delete every single comment and that's my take now. Once people start making stupid personal remarks about our personal appearance I'm not even going to bother replying to these people, I'm just going to go block, block and delete, bye bye. <laughs> No, he really hates coming away from the sea. <laughs> Every time you take him away from the sea back up onto the beach, he's like, no, I want to play in the sea. He's fine as soon as he sits down and realises he likes sand as well. But that's how much this baby loves the sea. Choke butterfly. <coughs> uh, yeah. So that's that. That's your throttle butterfly, the other side. Okay. So when you open that, it allows more air in and then it'll start sucking fuel through. Happy dad. Basically. By creating, I say they're simple, they are quite simple, they're very clever. You see how there's a, like, it's, it's bigger in the one side than the other? Yeah. As the air flows over it, it creates an area of low pressure, like an aeroplane wing, thus causing fuel to be pulled up through that central hole. That's what's causing issues of us being able to leave Padstow. Doing what? An area of low pressure. <laughs> yeah, area of low pressure like there is in Padstow. Uh, so where are these needles that are all blocked? So. In the bottom of that, I don't know if you can see that tube inside in the middle there. Mm. The fuel will basically, when that's full throttle, there'll be fuel being sucked up from there due to the low pressure being pulled into the engine. Then your uh, your jets, there'll be a main jet in the bottom of that. Can you say that part? Yeah, so that's got to come out. So to do that, you undo these are four screws on the bottom. And then be very careful because there'll be a float and a needle valve and all sorts. That's the best I can offer. Oh, that's perfect. My food Tupperware. Yeah, it's probably in there. We'll let it soak a bit. But your problem's going to be in here. Your problem's going to be in there, is it? That's your main jet. Oh, okay. So do I need to do anything on that? Yeah. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. That's the, the, oh, it's in the other one. It's actually clear that the, the centre one's clear. The other one I can't sit down, but... Yeah, spray yeah, some stuff um, through it and it'll be yeah, fine, we'll, that will. we'll blast it all out. I've never seen corrosion like that. <laughs> but it's because the, the E10 fuel's got quite a high water content in right, comparison. Yeah. It's alright if you're using a lot of it. Yeah. Right, what now? I'll start cleaning it up. Right, let's go and sort them and then... Yeah, give it a good, good solid spraying and we'll leave it to soak in carb cleaner while we go and have dinner. Slippery. <laughs> go. Go, go, go. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>